So coming to the end of autumn now and I thought it would be a good time to start doing some more regular update videos of what it's kind of like in practice to garden over winter. And today's a great example. It's pretty chilly but it's quite dry and not too bad and it's harvest day so I thought I'd take you along on the harvest and uh, yeah you'll see what you get. So not surprisingly I always like to do the root veggies first and today I'm starting with Jerusalem artichokes and these are a staple for us at this time of year you have them most days and they're very popular with us and our friends and family these are a bit kind of crammed in unfortunately you know there's not much space for them but uh, still get a pretty good harvest certainly meets all of our needs and we do grow them in the ground I know some people like to grow them in containers but uh, they did well for us here sorry for the noise and we will harvest some of these that are underneath these paving slabs as well but for now I'm in a rush today so I'm just going to pick uh, the ones that are easily accessible. So next on the list are our carrots and we've got about one row of carrots a week between now and April. So let's get on with those. Some funny old carrots. Just look at that one. <laughs> Not so bad though. I'm pretty pleased with these. This variety that I'm harvesting right now is Tushon. And uh, it's one of my favourites for this time of year and we will soon be switching over to Eskimo but for now I think that's probably enough maybe I'll just take that one because it's such a beauty wow that is great I'm really happy with those so I like to get all my carrots processed here so that I can recycle the tops and also to make sure that all the soil goes back into the compost bins and they're pretty good there's a few little holes in some of them but uh, yeah I'm pretty pleased they're pretty clean one of the things with carrots I always find is you're never quite sure, you know, how many you're going to have. And sometimes you'd get like little tiny stubbly ones like this, you know, and sometimes you get like giants. And uh, yeah, it's always kind of uh, just slightly nerve wracking, you know, when you're harvesting them. Not knowing exactly what you're going to get, but uh, you know, we're coming into what I think of as carrot season now, really. Um, not just a bit of damage to that one there. Uh, you know, when it's just the taste is just amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so nice. You know, we get, we've, we've had a first frost, so they're already sweetening up no end. Uh, it's quite noticeable. And so now's the time really for, you know, beautiful carrots. It always amazes me that a lot of people just grow carrots in summer when the taste is just really, you know, suboptimal and, uh, and don't leave them for winter. I mean, obviously we have them in summer as well, but uh, yeah, winter carrots are just amazing. Looking pretty good. And now I just want to pick the salad carrots so nothing particularly 
unusual about the varieties for the salad carrots it's just that they're just a bit smaller because they're planted later and these are for me just the right size really for munching on in a salad and they don't grow much more than this to be honest at this time of year so and being smaller they're more susceptible to damage so this part of the harvest is mine really so i tend to just do the picking um partly because my cold tolerance is a bit better than debbie's and all of this hands in the cold water uh, doesn't really work so well for her but uh, yeah I, I really like this and just getting the basic clean up done and then Debbie will do the finish off the cleaning and the packing and all of that and I really like this kind of process of building out the harvest on here and seeing it all start to develop. So I'm not picking these today but I'm just checking up on the ochre that I grow in my containers and I've got all these containers down here so quite a few um, but you can see them all here look they're just all bursting out of the compost and what I'm really checking for actually is mice so you just have to be a bit careful with the mice they do love ochre and uh, I don't need to pick these yet though because we really want these in winter and for now we're picking radish so let's get on with that. So we generally only have radish up until December as I said and then we switch over to the ochre um, so we've got one more bed in addition to these to pick. These are looking quite nice still they're not too bad they're still really nice and sweet and tender um, but they do degrade I think after a while um, so uh, I'll get all those cleaned up so not too many here but uh, just enough so I, t I like to do it like this and that's basically what I'm saving just that little bit there and uh, I'll give them a bit of a wash we're not at the moment eating uh, radish tops um, just the they're okay, quality is okay, um, but I'm not having smoothies right now, so uh, just having a change. And so we've got nobody eating smoothies, and I think radish tops are best in smoothies. So these are just going in the compost. But uh, I like to just leave a bit of green on them. I think I don't know why I think it just makes them look fresher when they're like that but these will go straight into the salad mixes so I'm not leaving any more green on than you can eat you can see some of these they've been in the ground for maybe a little bit too long just starting to split a little bit still perfectly edible but uh, I wouldn't want to leave them any longer which makes me think that I will actually look at my second bed and see if any of those are splitting because if they are it's best to probably harvest those now rather than leave them so they're looking okay so I did just pick a few more from that bed because we've got about three weeks supply there and I really don't think these are going to stand in the ground for more than another week or so I don't want to waste them there we go as you can see we only harvest what we need one week at a time so now I'm going to pick some turnips and I have them interplanted into this brassica bed and I've got some more in the polytunnel which I'll show you in a minute so these are not going to grow much more now so I'm actually going to harvest even the little ones and um, it's just you know light levels are dropping now and it's getting cold so outside of the polytunnel I don't think we're going to see any significant growth they will hold reasonably well in the ground um, but we have noticed a little bit of rotting on them so uh, 
Oh, actually, yeah, that's, that one's quite soft. Most of them are, are pretty good. So, yeah, not too bad. So I think probably only one more harvest of turnips uh, next week from the open ground. And as I say, then we'll switch to the ones in the polyton. We're even going to eat little tiny ones like this. Um, that's what you do when you're self-sufficient. You just have to kind of uh, be happy to eat anything that's uh, of good quality. I'm happy with these. Looking pretty good. go so that is almost all the root veggies done now I just got to get the parsnips and the potatoes from the store and the beetroot from the store and then that's all done so these are the turnips in the polytunnel and you can see that the turnip greens are so much better here that's why we just compost in those other turnip greens they were badly eaten by flea beetle whereas these are gorgeous and these are just starting to uh, root up now nicely so this will be uh, the bed that we're eating from uh, until the end of the year so next on my list are leeks and we have leeks everywhere they're just stuck everywhere um, and they're all multi sown all quite small because they've been under the shade of the brassicas but uh, you see they're still decent size I'm happy with these um, well, I've got some bigger ones, so I'm going to let these carry on growing for a while. I'll pick some of these. Now, these are actually quite interesting because they were transplanted from just there. So you can see there's little leeks, baby leeks, all the way around there. They're all pretty small, but again, as I said, small isn't bad. They're really tender, really gorgeous, and there's loads and loads of them. I've got more than that as well. But uh, these ones that were transplanted just that little bit bigger. So let's get these picked. They do clean up nice. So now I want to pick some brassicas. And at this time of year, we're mainly picking sprout leaves and collet leaves and kale. And they're gorgeous. So we love these sorts of leaves here. Obviously, these, this plant's nearly finished now. I'm not going to take too many off it. The, uh, so I'm just taking you know, just one or two leaves off. Effectively, these are sprout tops, but rather than just waiting and picking the whole sprout top, I prefer to do it one leaf at a time. We just get a bigger harvest that way. So I want to fill this bucket. So that's starting to fill up nicely. I'm just going to pick some of this perennial kale. I like some of these younger leaves myself. So I'll take some of these. And uh, these plants are just so vigorous. You just keep on picking. They just seem to regrow just as quickly. Um, later on in the season we'll pick more collets and more actual bustle sprouts but for now it's all kind of just leafy greens leafy brassica greens for us and just a probably one container of actual sprouts there's the sprouts looking quite nice I'm trying to pick the ones that are starting to just blow in a little bit at this time of year leaving the ones that are nice and tight for later on in winter. So I'm just going to pick some of these gorgeous turnip greens. It doesn't really uh, reduce the yield very much if you just only take a handful of leaves. And they are really lovely at this time of year. And a nice complement to spinach, basically. Just use them exactly the same way that you would use 
spinach just uh, steam them stir fry them that sort of thing Looking pretty good so uh, yeah there we go very nice and so now I'm on to the spinach and at this time of year you don't want to pick too many leaves off each plant so I'm just generally taking one or two from this bed leaving plenty of leaf area for the plants to keep on growing and we're actually going to have quite a sunny week next week and so I can afford to take just a little bit more than I normally would quite a few beds of spinach so I don't need to kind of go too aggressive and I will try and pick some of the lower lying leaves as well just to try and make sure that I'm keeping the beds in good condition it's quite a slow process though harvesting uh, at this time of year you do have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Now because we don't have huge quantity of spinach, because the uh, October sown, October planted beds are not in full production yet, I am picking quite a few field bean tips as well. We've got loads of these and they make a really nice spinach alternative. And this tatsoi was sown back in August. And what I find with an August sowing is that it'll tend to go to seed pretty quickly in spring. So given that the leaf quality degrades in winter, and then as soon as it starts to pick up in spring it tends to go to seed um, I like to have it really all picked in uh, December and actually this one you can see for example here that is going to seed already um, so yeah so it's a great crop for sort of autumn, autumn and early winter and then I'll get this bed replanted and I'm not exactly sure because I don't plan to that level of precision exactly what's going to go in here um, but I suspect it'll be either lettuces for spring which I'll put in in late December or it'll be something like calabrese for spring which again I'll put in probably in uh, late winter, so it's perhaps in February time. But that is beautiful at this time of year, absolutely beautiful. And it's basically the same story with the patchoy. Again, the quality of the harvest starts to degrade in winter, even, on, even with this protection. And again you can see here maybe this is starting to show signs now that that's going to go to seed so yeah you know the important lesson is <laughs> don't, don't hang on to these sorts of crops forever thinking that uh, you'll be harvesting them into May or something like that you know just won't happen and um, make sure you pick it now when it's at its peak and have something to replant it with and as I said you know, things like lettuces, calabrese, spring cabbages, um, cauliflowers all those sorts of things can all be planted quite happily in winter 
as can uh, spinach, things like that. So you can have all those sorts of things on the go, ready to be planted out. And if you don't fancy any of those sorts of things, then turnips in uh, February and uh, radishes and things like that in a cold frame, they will also do just fine. But again, that, you just can't beat it for an autumn crop, can you? Gorgeous. So now I'm onto the lettuces. And there's a lovely range of these. That I'm picking these from the polytunnel, not because um, this is the only place I've got lettuce. I've got lettuce, a lot of it, in low tunnels outside. But mainly because this just needs picking. It's at that size now where the quality of these leaves is going to start to degrade if they're not managed you know, and uh, picked regularly. So, you know, I want to get these plants sort of down to this sort of size, hopefully. You can see what I'm doing here. Um, taking off all but the inner ring of leaves because there's plenty of growing time left for these plants between now and the middle of December when they stop growing. So I need to make sure that I keep on top of the harvest of them to keep the quality high. I'm pretty pleased with the way they're looking. Um, so this is a, a lolo. I've just been picking these lovely crinkly little leaves and this actually is one of my favourite of the lolo varieties. It's uh, R-I-C-C-A I think is the Rica or something like that. This year, I don't know, my Italian pronunciation is pretty diabolical. And next to these are Roxy. And these are looking pretty good as well. And again, same sort of story. I want to take all of these lower leaves off leaving perhaps one, two, three, four, five leaves or something like that. And as I said, they hopefully these don't need much more harvesting after this. Um, they'll just be able to grow on nicely until winter and I'll be able to use my outdoor beds between now and, uh, and winter. It's just nicer to harvest in the polytunnel. Uh, when it's really cold than it is kind of kneeling down on frosty ground when there's a gale blowing outside. And I've also been picking this bed here outside under this little low tunnel and you can see this is now going to seed and these are August planted, sown and uh, I'm hoping to take the last harvest off this bed in maybe two weeks time and get it replanted for spring. Of course chard is an amazing staple at this time of year. We've got chard in the polytunnel as well but right now of course the chard outside is doing great and better than the chard in the polytunnel as expected. It's actually often the case at this time of year, things do better outside. Here's a great example of a plant that does really well outside, Claytonia. A little bit tricky to harvest, so it's not one um, that you would want to grow in a commercial setting, but uh, it does well for the home gardener, it is beautiful and the stems are really nice so you want to make sure you get a decent amount of stem. 
fact I think the stems are the best the best part of it and picked at this time of year it will fully recover by uh, by winter well not not by winter sometime during winter so next up are the parsnips and I want to be picking about two a week now between now and the end of the year I'm not actually going to leave them in beyond the end of the year I find that uh, you know early winter is the best time and I'm sure those will clean up lovely so salad onions are another great crop that do brilliantly outside at this time of year and the way I like to harvest them is I like to just pull them up a little bit and then push the scissors in and just snip the roots off like this so that uh, I can leave the roots in the ground like that later on in the sea in the year uh, salad onions will not do as well outside so they're best left until spring rather than harvested because they'll be a little bit small but these are our first succession and so they're all a good size um, even now so here's the harvest for the week it's looking quite nice quite a big increase actually from last week which is kind of what we like to see now and hopefully will continue to increase for a few weeks and then it'll start to decline as we head towards the shortest day and then it'll stay low but we'll be taking more from store uh, through until about the middle of February so we'll see how that dips down how we cope during that period but we've got potatoes from the store beetroot and onions from the store there'll be garlic from the store and things like that as well turnip greens Brussels sprouts spinach loads of spinach actually so there's yeah, and the, the field bean tops more spinach there more spinach there claytonia for the salads those leeks the um, Jerusalem artichokes the cooking carrots the turnips the radishes the pak choy and tatsoi and the parsnips more pak choy and tatsoi and all those mixed brassica leaves and one of many uh, crown prince squash again we've got enough of those hopefully to see us through until may and then all the salad ingredients i've shown you some salad ingredients already but this whole table of salads and um, salads underneath the salads uh, salad onions salad onion tops and salad carrots so I'm going to sort those salad mixes out now add tomatoes grapes uh, radishes and all of that okay there's all the salad mixes obviously we didn't grow the cheese and the tomatoes or the grapes in that so I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.